I'm gonna be reviewing the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Now, I bought this guy with my own money. Google did not send it to me. This is not sponsored. This is my genuine thought as a consumer and as a videographer, as the Google Pixel cameras have always been pretty cool. But because this guy cost me a pretty penny, and as much as I love Marcus Brownlee and Mr. Who's the Boss and Unbox Therapy, uh, yeah, I don't make really any money from YouTube. So if you do in end up enjoying this video, uh, just give that little like button to press, maybe to share this with someone that you think would enjoy it. But anyways, um, let's get into it and talk about the phone. The Pixel 6 Pro has all the flagship features like a 6.7 inch 1440x3120 HDR 120Hz OLED display, an in-screen fingerprint scanner, stereo speakers, Wi-Fi 6, 5G, and Google's very own in-house tensor processor built for AI. Of course, that processor was recently beaten in a benchmark of Apple's in-house processor, but that's just one benchmark and hopefully it will get better with time. I mean, that's what AI does, right? Hopefully. For cameras this time around, we have a 50 megapixel sensor, a 48 megapixel sensor on the back, as well as an 11 megapixel sensor on the front, which actually looks pretty good from my testing. I do want to go over some of the cool software features like Magic Eraser and things with Android 12 that I really like, but I am a videographer, so let's take a look at the test footage I captured with this guy. So some thoughts about the camera. When it comes to capturing stills, I still have not seen a phone that does it better than Pixel. When you open the camera app and you see the real-time image of, of what's happening, you tap that capture button and it chooses the best moment over the past few seconds that that app has been open to capture and process the least blurry, sharpest, and just cleanest image it can and it looks really good, especially the portrait mode, which when portrait mode first started, you know, it's kind of like a Snapchat filter. It wasn't it wasn't perfect at like cutting out the hair because it's not actually using a long camera lens or a very wide aperture to have the shallow depth of field, the bokeh. It's just using AI to guess what that blur would look like. And it's uh, it does it really artistically and it does it pretty well for both pets and, uh, and other kind of random objects that I've played with a little bit. Because I'm a video guy, naturally, I've tested the video mode a little bit more and it's nice. It does have image stabilization. I believe it actually is optical, so there is some actual lens attenuation for, for adjusting to movement as well as some software. Especially in lower light and at lower frame rates, you do notice that kind of like jittery effect when it's stabilizing. But when you are at the max frame rate of 60 frames per second, the stabilization works really well and I think turns out something that's pretty comparable to a GoPro. The multiple lenses also offer a lot of really cool flexibility without using all digital zoom. In this shot here, you can see I have a, a really wide shot of this river and little waterfall. But as I switch to the different cameras, you see it refocus and you just get a really nice, sharp and well stabilized image as it switches between the different camera modes. One of my only and biggest complaints though is there is no manual mode 
for the camera. You can manually adjust the exposure and the color correction, but there's no official markings of what you're adjusting, if it's the ISO or or the, the shutter speed. And, and I, I know that these cameras and the software is advanced enough to have that. I think a lot of professional photographers and videographers would really appreciate that. So Google, if you see this, give us manual controls. Don't let me find a third party app that doesn't utilize the rest of the camera's software as well. And, uh, and please, please work with TikTok because TikTok does not look good when recording in the app. I know that's just, that's just how Android is when there's a bazillion phones, but work with ByteDance, please. I'm trying to blow up on TikTok. Another camera mode I wanted to mention is the Google Pixel's night sight mode. For reference, here's a picture of the park near our house. Here's a picture with the night sight mode. Do, do, I, do I need to say anything else? I, I didn't think so. Moving on. But moving on from the camera hardware, let's talk about the rest of it. I mean, I really like the design. It really feels unique. The camera bump is something I haven't really seen before in the industry. Um, it kind of has this funny hack where you can lean it up against a, a monitor and it will stay there. Whoops. Have I had that going the whole time? Did I forget to minimize it? Michael, did you forget to minimize? I think Google really found a nice identity with this phone. Um, from the front, it does look a lot like a Galaxy S21 Plus or even like the Note 10. But I mean, with phones these days, when you're creating a 9x16 slab of glass with a screen, there's only so much unique stuff you can do apart from making folding phones, which uh, I got to make a video about folding phones because if it wasn't for how sensitive their screens were, I would really want one, but I don't know. We'll see where that technology goes. The other big complaint I would have is there's still no SD card slot. Um, I know there's a becoming a thing of the past, but I guess it's not really a big deal. I can offload all of the pictures and videos I take. I can back them up to my terabyte of OneDrive storage. Now the Pixel 6 runs on Android 12, which Android, especially over I'd say the past five years, has really been innovating in, in bringing something that feels as fast and as fluid and as beautiful as iOS. And I would say at this point that Google's pure Android 12 and iOS 15, whatever, is, is very similar. It has a very similar gesture system to move between your applications. Um, there's no like back button anymore. It's just gestures up from the bottom of the screen. I think that's really cool. It does take a lot of getting used to coming from the uh, the older versions of Android that always had those three buttons on the bottom. I also really like the default animations. Um, when it comes to the Pixel launcher, I almost never feel like I have to replace it with a different launcher like Nova. When I get like a Samsung or an LG, I, I really have a hard time liking any phone's launcher that, uh, that isn't just pure Android. And they did a really good job with this one. I have only had the phone for like three days. I wanted to get an initial review out. So I'll follow back up in maybe a few weeks, a month or something like that for maybe a, a follow up review to see how I'm still liking the phone. I think overall it's going to end up being one of the best phones I've ever had, mainly because uh, it's pure Android. It's always going to get their updates. They're claiming it's going to get five years of Android updates, 10 years of security updates. So yeah, we'll see if I can make this thing last two years or maybe more, but yeah. Feel free to leave any questions about the Pixel in the comments. I'll, uh, I'll answer them for you. And again, if you like this video, give that little like button a press, share it with someone who you think might enjoy it, and consider subscribing and join Induction Studios. I got my link tree down in the description if you want to follow me across all of my social media. And until next time, I hope that you have a great day, a great night, a great life. And stay safe. I did it! I recorded a video!